Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. So today this is going to be my picture for Mermaiduary, my hashtag for January. Um, this is a picture made by Valerie Flynn over at Art Ella Cart. I will make sure that I leave her YouTube link down below and also where you can picture or you can purchase this from. I got it off of Etsy. Um, she did a whole mermaid uh, little book that you can purchase. Um, so today I want to, we're going to watercolor today. And this is just on a, a clipboard so it can kind of be tilted a little bit for me. I have an easel, but I figured this would be um, good enough for today. And um, I'm not going to watercolor technically. Like, I'm not going to get down into the nitty gritty and say, well, this is how you do it. We're not going to do that. We're going to watercolor like if it's your first time watercoloring, you just got your um, budget friendly watercolors or affordable watercolors and you just want to have some fun. That's why I picked this image because it was little, it's kind of small, but you can have a lot of fun with it. Um, the other thing is, is I'm probably going to be stopping this video a lot um, and then coming back to it because me personally, I like to let it dry naturally instead of using a heat gun or a blow dryer. I like to let it dry naturally and then come back and do some more on it. So real quick, though, I want to show you guys something. So this... Um, beautiful leather journal was sent to me for Christmas by a, um, a wonderful lady that is also a subscriber and it is absolutely gorgeous so it's real leather and it's so soft like it is so super like you can scrunch it up super super soft and in it is um, watercolor paper oops it's upside down See how I did that? Um, but it's all watercolor paper and um, it has these deckled edges and it's, I'm going to say that it's handmade watercolor paper by the way that it feels. And this was um, by Vicki Sheehan. And Vicki, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing your name wrong, but she has an Etsy shop. I'll also leave that down in the link. But this journal is so beautiful and it's so nice. The problem is, is it is so nice that I don't want to use it. Like I don't want to put paint in it, but I have to because it's such a beautiful gift that I don't want it to go to waste. So eventually I'll find a really nice use for it. Um, and maybe some more of my technical type um, watercolor paintings I'll put in here to just have, you know, a journal of my, my masterpieces. Yeah, not really, but you know. So I wanted to share that with you guys. All right, so let me tie this back up really quick. Tuck it in. Okay, so we're going to work on this, like I said, it's by Valerie Flynn, and she is great. I don't know if you guys um, ever watched her channel or not, but she is funny, and she does a lot of art um, things. She's a, She draws a lot, like all these pictures are hand-drawn, and uh, she has a um an etsy shop where you can buy her stickers she's also on patreon um tons of different things okay so let's start here and like this part that i'm going to do is just going to be the water and then i'm going to stop and just because i'm going to use a lot of water on that and the water pretty much touches everything and if i go in and i paint um let's say if i do the water and i come in and paint her hair it'll bleed into the water and i don't want to do that so I'm just going to do a real quick wash, a light wash on all the water. I'm going to stop the video, let it dry, and then I'll be back. So the way that I like to do it, oh, and look, so I got Mr. Nasty, as always, that needs to go into the washing machine, but I figured this would be the last time I use him. And I got my new one, clean. Um, I got a little bit of paint on there, but you know. So I got them both with me today. So the way that I like to do it is I like to do, especially like on a big section, I mean, you'll see me do it again on the background, is a wet, it's called the wet and wet um, technique. So I'm just getting my brush wet with just straight water. And I am using um, somewhat craft brushes. These are um, Robert Simmons Sapphire. They're actually nice brushes, but that's what I'm using here today. And I am going to be kind of careful, especially around these small bits where I put the water, because I don't want it to bleed into there. 
Um, I also am going to leave the outside edges um, white because I want that to be um, in with my background. And if you guys find that, you know, you're going over something with a little bit of water, that's okay. You can always dab it off with a, a clean towel um, or just let it do its thing because watercolor, that's, you know, the greatest thing about watercolor is when it runs into each other, it can make some phenomenal effects. So I went over the rocks a little bit there, but I'm not worried about that. And I'm not really worried about the bubbles too much, only because I'm going to come back in with some shiny paint and uh, do those. The other reason why I like having my um, paper kind of tilted is all the water um, when I paint, you'll see like all the, the paint will run down to the bottom. And so I don't have these big pools of water, um, except for on the bottom. And with those, I can go in and kind of lift them off. It's all these little spaces that take me the longest. And I try to do it kind of quick. So this way, this water's not drying um, before I get all the water over here. So when I in, go and touch my brush in the water, I do have like an excess amount on there. So I don't like to do these little spaces with that. So I'll touch on one of the big spaces and um, kind of get all the excess off and then come back and do the little spaces. So I want to know if any of you guys have dabbled in watercolor or if it's something that you want to dabble in. I know it's a big thing in the coloring community right now. And normally I just do it in my spare time. Um, like when I'm stressed or um, when I'm sitting here and I kind of have like that coloring block, let's say, where I just, I don't know what I want to color or how I want to color something. Um, I'll sit here and I'll just watercolor away. Okay, so we are just about done with all of this water. I'm going to come back over here and add some more just to make sure that it's not dry. And you can kind of see where it's shiny. I don't know if you guys can see or not. Um, but when it's shiny like that, it's, it's wet. You just don't want your paper sopping wet. And I did tape this on my clipboard only because um, I don't want it to buckle too much because I am using the Canson XL paper okay so um i got sent these beautiful beautiful um josie lewis paints that are gorgeous so i just got them for christmas from a lovely subscriber and uh it's something that i've been playing around with and i love them like they are just gorgeous gorgeous paints so i'm going to use this blue and i'm kind of watering it down a bit so that it's kind of light and I'm literally just going to touch it where the water is and if you can see it kind of does its own thing and we're just going to put that in everywhere and remember when you watercolor um, it dries a lot lighter than when you put it on and you'll see that like you'll see the coverage now and you'll see the coverage um, when it's dry and how much lighter and smoother it is but this is my favorite part. Like when you put the water on and you put the paint on and it just kind of goes everywhere. And these little bits I just kind of like dotted in, in those corners there. And I don't know, I guess I'm, I'm kind of frugal with my paints. Like I don't want to waste any pigment. And I know that's so stupid. So I tend to use um, a lot less than maybe I need. Um, and if that happens, you just make some more and go on your way. I 
I'm really excited to do this because I also, from the same subscriber, I also got some other paints um, that I've been dying to use. And it's so out of my forte, like it's not something that I would normally use. And I figured this picture is perfect to use these paints with. And they're so bright and they're so cheery. And I absolutely love them. Okay, so you can see like where I'm pulling down here. So all I'm doing is I'm drying off my brush a little bit. And I'm just going to pick up all that excess. So this way I don't have like this pool of water that's going to sit there. And then when it dries, it kind of isn't the same color. And you kind of get these little, um, I don't know, I call them sunbursts. I know there's a technical name for them. So yeah, wherever you see like you have some excess paint, just come in, lift it off with a dry brush. And let it be. And having it at an angle like this, you can see where it just keeps running and running. And that's what I want because I don't want to fight with um, trying to pick up where I left big puddles all over the place, even though I feel like I am a little bit right now. Okay, so that's going to be our base coat for this. Um, so I'm going to let that dry and I will be back with you guys momentarily. Okay, so let's get down to her tail, but I want to show you guys these paints first. So check out these paints. Aren't they bright? Um, now, I don't know the specific name of them, and I will find out because um, there is a website on the bottom, um, Kiss Ho, and the rest of it's all in Chinese, but they all do have names. You know, we got um, Opera, Rose, Orange, Yellow, Light Orange, and Pink but they're so bright and so neon and i kind of wanted to make this picture um i don't want to say kid like but i wanted to make it a little bit softer and again not so technical so with these paints i'm going to kind of just spray them with my little spray bottle to get them all wet here and then I'm using this little bitty palette that she sent me. And I thought it was so cute. And I don't even know where she got it from. But it is so cute with all these little teardrops. Okay, so I'm going to take get some water here. And I'm going to take some of this orange, the light orange. Let me move this out of the way so you guys can see what I'm doing. And I'm just going to put it in my little teardrop here. I'm going to add some water to it. Because my initial, when I when I paint, initially I like doing everything light and then building up the color. Because I feel like if I go dark right away, um, that I don't have that ability to get it light again. So I'm just going to take this orange and very lightly I'm going to cover her entire. And you guys see that I didn't wet this first. Um, but I'm going to co cover her entire tail with this orange. And I'm still using that same number 10 brush um, because I've been trying to teach myself to have more control with a bigger brush. Um, I've always opted for a smaller brush because to me, I felt like I had more control over it. Um, but I'm learning, you know, and this is a process where every day I'm learning something new, whether it's coloring, water coloring, whatever. Like I'm always learning. Okay, so we are going to clean off the brush. And then I am going to go ahead, since that needs to dry, I'm going to go ahead and jump up here to the flowers. And I'm going to go back to this palette here, the Josie Lewis palette. And I'm just going to grab some of this really bright pink color. And we're going to water that down a little bit. Let's get that nice and light. And we're going to go in and do these flowers. And it's the same thing here. I don't know if you guys can tell, but I have some excess water here. So I'm just going to take my brush, dab that out a little bit, and let that dry just like that. So let's come in and do our other one. 
I always try to do the stuff not by the wet stuff. Like I said, so it doesn't bleed in. I need just a little bit more pink in there. And then we're going to pull that color right back out. And you guys, this isn't like real a drill tutorial. This is just me talking about, you know, the techniques that I learned when I just started watercolor um, that helped me out. Okay, so I know that this tail is probably still a little wet down there and that's okay because I'm gonna but I'm gonna go ahead and um, grab this green and we're gonna start on these leaves I figure if I start at the top and uh, I'll do it here if I start at the top I should be okay once I get to the bottom it might dry enough adding water to that of course Get it all off my brush. Now, the one thing about watercolor that I just started realizing is if you leave a little bit of white, that's okay because it kind of gives it its character. And see, I went over into that blue just a little bit. So I'm going to kind of dab that off. And I am going to kind of keep my towel by me. So this way I can pick up these pools. As I go. Because this whole thing, you know, I always keep it at an angle. So it's always going to kind of pull up at the bottom. And pull down this whole... This is when I get really nervous. When I have to use this big brush down these little areas. And I'm not too worried if it goes over into the blue too much because I am going to do more to the blue areas. And I think, you know, with watercolor, that's the thing, like patience. You have to have patience um, because it has to dry. And if you don't, if you're not patient with it, then it kind of just bleeds into each other and then you just get frustrated. So. Okay, now I know that this is wet right here, but I'm not going to go that far into the tail. I'm going to, but I'm going to go back. I mean, I'm not going to go that far into the, the leaves, but I am going to go back to her tail. So what I decided to do was to use this pink right here. Let's get some water in there. Now, you know, there's like technical terms for everything, um, but I'm not going to throw out technical terms. We're just going to go over this. So I got this pink and I'm going to kind of go over most of this. Just leaving the orange on that outside part. Like that. And then I'm going to clean my brush off. Let's pick up these puddles. And then I'm going to go in with just straight water. And I'm going to kind of blend that all in. So this way when it dries, you don't have those like harsh-ish lines. So I'm just kind of blending that all together and you can still see, you know, the orange and the pink and the contrast of the two. Okay. So now we got to let that dry. Um, now the, where I kind of got stuck at is what I wanted to do with this sign. Um, 
because I, I have an idea what I want to do with the rest of it, but I wasn't sure on this sign. So what I decided to do um, was to, let me dry this off here a bit, get that clean. I still had some of that pink coming off. Um, so what I think I'm going to do with the sign, I'm because I got my Paul Rubin um, shimmers over here because it's a mermaid and we're going to do some shimmery stuff. So I figured why not go ahead and make the sign shimmery. Um, so I got my, my here and I'm going to choose this purpley pink like color. So I'm going to go ahead and get that wet and get that activated. So I'm just kind of getting it going here, getting it moving. And I'm going to pull that out onto my palette. And these shimmer paints are so pretty. Okay. Pick that up and we're going to go ahead and do this whole sign. Now, the one thing that I did find um, when I was watercoloring a different coloring page is this black sometimes from the printer doesn't like the wetness. So when I go over that, I kind of make sure that I go real quick so this way it doesn't... Um, bleed too much into the paint and I don't know if you have like a laser jet printer if it would do that I'm gonna assume yes um but I don't know mine's just an inkjet printer Okay, so I don't know if you guys will probably won't give you that shine just yet. It needs to dry and get all prettified. So we're going to let that dry. Um, let's see. Still a little wet. That's wet. We can go back up to these leaves, I think. Okay, so I use that light green um, to do the leaves. And we're going to go back in with that same green. We're just not going to dilute it as much. And then what I want to do is just add, here's my swatches of them. Um, so I want to add just a little bit of this color here, this darker. Um, it is called ultramarine turquoise. Uh, so that's what I'm going to add to it. So we're going to get that. And I just want a little bit of it to mix in there to just kind of deepen this green just a little bit more. Rinse off my brush. And I'm literally just going to kind of drop it in wherever I think that it needs it. Let me get my, my towel back here. Or actually, I should say wherever it kind of lands. Because in watercolor, um, you know, you can, you can go and you can make it however you want it to look. Um, and be very precise with it. Me, I like just dropping color down. Like I think that the it always looks the best when you don't think too much on it and you just do whatever the water wants you to do. I'll try to put a little bit in the stem here. Okay, so I'm going to go back in with my water, or I should say with a dry brush. And I'm going to pick up these pools again. try to lift up that green just a little bit from there okay now so now i'm going to kind of go in with just plain water and get out that harshness just a little bit And while this is still wet, I want to go in with that um, ultramarine again. 
just a little bit of it. And as you can see, it's pretty, it's pretty blue. We'll put in a little bit more of that green. And I just want to drop this in just, just a little bit. And I'm literally just like dabbing it in. Just to kind of give it a little bit of, um, of a pop. And listen, if you're a watercolorist, don't leave a comment like, oh, you're doing it all wrong. Because I'm not doing this to um, be a professional. I'm doing it just to have fun and um, show people that you don't have to know all those watercolor skills. You can just have fun doing it. And as you do it, um, you learn how to get better at it. You learn all these techniques. Like, I've learned so many techniques, it's not even funny. And that's just from me playing around. Um, I mean, there's a lot of YouTubers out there that does phenomenal watercoloring. Um, so I watch them, you know. But a lot of it is just me playing around. Like, I think that's the best way is just to get out paper, get out a brush, get out some paints, and just have fun. Don't think about, oh, man, I didn't want it to look like that. Just have fun. Okay, so we're going to leave it like that for now. And we're going to come back down to her tail. So I'm going to take some of this darker pink color. Like, I want the tail to be like the show. Okay, let's water that down a little bit. Just drop my water bottle. Okay. So I'm going to do the same thing with this darker pink. I'm just not going to go out as far. So this way I have that other pink still. Go into her tail just a little bit. Okay. And then I want to take my, my lighter pink that I used. I'm going to just kind of blend that out there. Because right now, all I'm trying to do now is just kind of build up color. And then we're going to go back to that orange. And we're going to blend that all in. And some more of this pink here. And it's just about, you know, figuring out where your water is going. Like that's what, that's what I struggled with when I first started this because I did not know where my water was actually going. Because I felt like it had a mind of its own and it wanted to do whatever it wanted to do. Um, so while this is still wet, I do want to go in and I'm going to use this palette again. And I want to take some of this purple. And guys, I'm a mess with my palettes. I kid you not, like most of my palettes, like I wiped this one down um, before I put this on film. Because if you would have seen it before, like it was a mess. Okay, so I just want to take a little bit of this purple while this is still a little bit wet. And I just want to drop it in on the edges. And it's not going to look very purple right now. But we're going to add to it again. I just kind of like mapping out my colors a little bit. Because it helps me. Okay, so we're going to leave that. And we'll come back to that in a minute. So we're going to jump back up to these flowers here. So I use this pink right here. I'm going to get some more of that. And we're just not going to dilute it as much. So this way it's a more vibrant pink. And I'm just going to go in. And what I'm going to try to do is I want to like flatten my brush a little bit. And I just want to like add in little, 
little lines of this darker pink. And I can use a skinnier brush for this, but I like challenging myself. And then I want to go really dark in the center. And I'm not worried about uniformity either. Like it's just, just whatever kind of falls into place. Okay, and we're going to let that dry. So I, all that's drying, I'm a little afraid to go down here. So the rocks, I thought, because everything else is going to be kind of bright, kind of real girly. I figured what I want to do is I want to make these rocks a little bit more um, natural feeling. So I'm just going to, and if you guys notice, there is no brown in this set. Um, there is no like neutral tint. There's... There's none of that stuff. So I'm going to kind of make my own. And I'm just doing it really light right now. Um, just to put the base down. All right. So let's go ahead and get this all on the rocks here. I was going back and forth, you know, as a kid... Oh, sorry. Um, as a kid, I we I mean we had fish tanks all the time. Like all, growing up, we always had a fish tank. Um, my dad really liked angelfish, so we always had big angelfish growing up. Um, when I became an adult, um, and me and Ricky started our family, we uh, we had big saltwater tanks, and I mean big saltwater tanks, and that was a passion of mine for a long time, but. What I was getting at is, so when I was a kid and we had all these fish tanks, like I always wanted to get like the bright um, neon color gravel. Like I was addicted to that. And as I got a little bit older, like into my teens and I still had my fish tanks, um, I opted for like the black gravel. I really like the black gravel. Um, and then as I got older into an adult and I still had freshwater tanks, I liked the natural look because it made like all my fish pop. I don't know. It was just me. But, so yeah, so I was really contemplating what I wanted to do with the gravel, and uh, this is what I decided on. I decided to just go really muted, really natural looking. Okay, so I want to come back up to this blue, and I am going to get this light blue back. Okay. And then I want to dive in to this little bit of a darker blue here. It is called Thalo Blue Red. So I just want to add a little bit of that in there just to get it just a little darker with that light blue. I went a little too dark. That looks good. That's the color I was going for. And then um, with this, I just want to go in and I want to just darken up some areas. So like up here on the water, I just put my hand in there. Um, up here in the water, like I just kind of want to go around that outside edge. And then again, when I do, you know, things like that, I like to just take plain water and then just kind of blend that in. And you guys can do this as many times as you want. Um, just have fun with it. It's gonna go darker around this edge here. Blend that out a little bit. I tend to wash my brush a lot because I don't want it to get too uh, muddy when I'm doing this. But then again, I tend to use a ton of water. I was on the phone with my girlfriend today and uh, I was like, I'm like, I use boatloads of water. And she's like, yep, me too. You know, I got a little hair right there. 
Um, so yeah, that's something that um, I've just always done. Like I use a lot of water. So then I'm gonna just kind of darken up some of these areas underneath her just a little bit. Do that whole section there. And then again, I'm just kind of blending that all out. And I'm just adding it in here and there just to kind of give it that like little bit of the contrast. I do want to go in with just a little bit of like the phthalo blue green um, and just add just tinges of that to this water or yeah to the to the water in the bowl. Okay, just want to make sure that's all blended really good. Like down here, I can already see a line forming. But again, I'm okay with it. Okay, so let's go. That still needs a little bit of time to dry. Let's go back down to these rocks. So I mixed up this brown color, and I'm just going to take a little bit more of this purple, and I'm going to mix it into there. And then I'm literally just going to drop more color in. Because if you ever look at those like natural kind of rocks, um, they're like speckled and they're all different colors. And, you know, you got some white ones, you got some brown ones, you got black ones. Okay, so how I like doing this. And this towel might not be the greatest. So after I put all these little dots in, I like just taking my towel and kind of dabbing it so that I still get the, the effect, the brown effect, but I don't get all those harsh dots. And I don't know if you guys can see that, but we're going to go in with some more. Now I'm going to switch to this littler brush, the little tiny brush, and we're going to darken this brown up. Add some red to that. And I got a really bad glare from the light, so I don't know how brown this is getting. But I don't want it to be like brown brown. I want it to be more like a reddish brown. So we're going to say that that's close to what I want. And all I'm going to do is kind of go back. Ooh, that might not be dark enough. No, it's not. Mm -hmm. A little bit more of this purple in there. Um, I just want to kind of get some dark spots, like where the rocks overlap a little bit. And I'm just going real quick. And you guys can take your time if you want. Okay, and that's pretty much where I'm going to leave it and let that dry. Because I'll sit here and I'll just keep playing and playing and playing and then I'll just add too much. So I'm not going to do that this time. Okay, so we're going to go back to her tail one last time. Well, kind of one last time. Um, and I'm going to get that purple again. This purple right here. And I'm going to water it down just a tad. Okay, and I'm going to go right on the edge here. Mm, I think I watered it down too much. There we go. Like, that's the purple that I want. Okay. 
and I know that it looks super bright or super dark I should say but a lot of it's just the water sitting on there so I'm gonna soak that up and then I'm just gonna go in I need a little bit more of that I'm gonna go in with my other colors and we're gonna blend it out and again like I don't even know if this is the right method um, because I kind of adapted it from how I color but it seems to work for me so I'm not going to change it okay it's this color I love this little teardrop um, palette though like I just think that it is darling okay so let's blend again and then we'll finish off with this orange And I know that it looks kind of stripey right now because like you can see where all the colors touch but then I just kind of go in with a clean brush and try to take all those little lines out pick up all this color and I kind of want her um, her tail to be I don't know what you call it like molted I guess you could say is the is the proper name for it like where it's just like all the colors kind of um, combining and like now I'm just dropping in a little bit of color here and there and then once that dries I'm gonna go back in one more time just in this section where I kind of went too light and I don't want to keep messing with it because if I do it's never going to be the way that I want it to so I'm gonna let that dry so let's go ahead and tackle her skin. Uh, well, maybe we should wait on that. Okay, well, we're going to go in with this. I'm going to water this, this brown down one more time. It's super light. And I'm going to just kind of brush over all of these rocks. And as you can see, like this shimmery purple, like you can see that it's shit. Well, I don't know if you guys can see, but it is shimmery now. Um, but the the words kind of turned blue, which I don't mind. Like that's okay for me. Um, it doesn't really bother me much. So this little thing right here in her hair, I'm not sure what that is. So I'm going to assume that it's kind of like a seashell-ish thing. So I'm just going to go in with some light purple. And I'm going to let that sit and dry. And then we can work some more on this water. I told you guys that I wanted to add in that um, phthalo blue green just to give that water a little bit extra color to it and I am going to go ahead and add some of this I like this lighter blue with it because it kind of mutes it down just a little bit all right so we're going to go back in and we're going to play a little bit with this I don't want it too green, um, but I want to give it a little bit of a of a green look, just so it's not real monotone looking. And I'm literally just going to kind of slap it in there. And then I'm going to take just clean water, and we're going to blend that all all in. And you'll see like that blue is still going to come through where the green is. 
I'm just trying to dilute that green around the edges or that green edge, that bluey green color. I think the the best thing that I like about watercolor is you can, I don't know, like I feel free when I use it. You know, I don't have to worry about if I go outside of the lines. I don't have to worry about any of that stuff. Like it's just, I can do whatever I want, let it go wherever I want, and it looks okay. Or sometimes it doesn't look okay, and that's okay too. Okay, I'm going to soak this up a little bit. All right, and I'm, I want to let that dry just a little bit um, because I want to come in and do something else to that. just want to make sure I get all those lines out the best that I can. All right, so we're going to let that dry real quick. Okay, so everything's drying. I'm going to go ahead and we're going to work on the background. Now, for the background, I'm going to do that wet and wet method again. And I kind of picked a bigger brush. It's actually, I believe it's a glazing brush. Yeah, it's a glazing brush. But it's a bigger brush because I want to get... Um, the water down pretty quickly. I'm trying to kind of be careful around the bowl, but I want um, it to show up in those white spaces that I left. And I mean, I could use a smaller brush around here, but like I told you guys, I'm trying to challenge myself here Okay, and now I want to take get that all shiny still. So I want to take this kind of maroonish kind of color here. And I guess I should have done this first, but that's okay. Because I want to do I want to do the background pretty light. So I'm going to water that down quite a bit. And I'm literally just going to brush it on and let it run. Okay, and that is that is on, and while it's still wet, I want to go in with that very first blue, that super light blue. And I just want to kind of drop that in. Try to lay this down a little flatter. I don't want the whole thing to be blue. I just want to kind of put a little bit in there. And it is going to turn it a little bit purple because we have that maroon on there. And that's okay. I just want it to kind of have that 
um, not flat look, like not just one color. I'll try to lift off some of this. And you know, even though I taped the paper to this, it's still going to buckle a little bit. So you're going to get um, it pulling up in some of those areas where it buckled. And that's okay. Just kind of pull it up. And it's okay if you leave some white spots. Um, it just adds character. All right. So we are going to let that dry. Okay, let's try to get this done. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do her skin. Let me just move this over here a little bit. I did pick up a little bit of a smaller brush. I'm using a number eight here just because I knew her face was going to be a little smaller. And I know that she's looking a little yellow, but that will get lighter. Okay, we'll let her dry. And while we're letting her dry, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to use the same brush here. And I'm going to take a little bit of um, that phthalo blue again. The darker blue. And we're going to get that nice and wet. So what I want to do with this. Okay, let's water that down just a bit. But what I want to do with this is put it in that, in the bowl. Okay. So then for this, I'm going to just pick up my fan brush and just dip it in the blue. And I like, when I when I use the fan brush, I like doing this and just kind of getting off the excess. And then I'm just going to lightly make some lines. Just like that. I'm gonna make maybe I'll make a couple up here like there's okay and that's it just something just something little because I feel like when you when you watercolor it's good to like play around even if it fails always play around okay I see where I have to pick up a little bit of excess here So we're going to let her dry. Let's see, what can I work on next? <laughs> so technically we're almost done except for her hair. Oh, you know what? We can work on her, on her skirt. Okay, so that's pretty much where I'm going to leave it. And I want to bring in my Paul Rubens 
my shimmeries and I'm going to use this very, very pale pink color. I'm just going to get that wet and let that activate a little bit. I know I have some other shimmer paints coming. I was told that today, so I'm super excited about that. But I do like my Paul Rubin shimmers. Now I know that that one, what is it, Karen Designs by Karen, I believe it is. I know that um, she has a lot of like shimmery paints and I see a lot of people talking about those. I've never tried them personally. Okay. So now that I got all that juiced up, maybe I need a little bit more juicing. I want to make sure that it's, you know, really wet because I'm going to use, and I shouldn't say quite a bit of it, but I'm going to color, cover that whole tail with it and I don't want to have to come back and re-wet it. All right, so let's pick that up and I'm literally going to go over the entire tail with it. And since it's that super light pink, over the colors that I chose it's not going to um, really alter the colors all that much you know you see I went out let's pick that up hmm. um, but yeah it's not going to kind of muddy up those colors too bad and it'll give us that nice sparkle that mermaids need in their lives okay so there is that I always try doing like the, the shimmers and the sparkles last normally because then in my water I get like that shimmery stuff and then when I go and use a different paint um, it, it has some shimmer to it sometimes but for right now it really doesn't matter. Okay so I'm going to go back to these really bright 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 colors and before I do that I'm going to go ahead and we're going to try this yellow here. Get that all going. I'm still kind of debating what I want to do with her hair, but I know that I want to use this yellow or this like shirt. It's more like a chartreuse to me. Okay. You know what? I'm going to put a little bit more in there just because she has a lot of hair. Here we go. Ooh, that's bright. I love it. Trying not to touch that tail with my with my hands with my fingers because I know that that's still pretty wet. So I'm gonna have to be careful when I get down here. All oh, that black's coming through again. It's okay. I knew better, but I still I still did it anyway. I'm going to pick this up so you guys can see it here when I'm done because I'm looking on the camera and it doesn't look nearly as bright as what it is right now. Like, it is so bright. Or maybe I'll turn my, my overhead light off because sometimes that, uh, that kind of makes things look a little, um, more flashed out when that's on. I'm sorry if I'm quiet, you guys. I'm just 
I told you guys before when I paint, I get all holding my breath and doing all that funky stuff. Okay, so we're going to let that go. Now I'm going to take my little tiny brush here. And I'm going to kind of go into this, my skin tone over here. But I'm going to bring in a little bit of this brown into the skin tone. And I'm going to use this little tiny, tiny, tiny brush. And I'm just going to go in and, oh, I don't know where to even touch. And I don't care if it bleeds into the hair a little bit. That doesn't bother me right now. And I don't even know if you guys can see this little shadow areas or not. But they are there. Go back in with this. Okay, and we are almost done. I want to do a little bit more to that hair. And what I want to do, I don't know if it's going to work, but hey, we're going to try it anyway. Okay. So, I don't know, you know, I'm kind of liking her hair the way that it is. But I think that we should be daring. Or maybe leave it the way it is and just add some gold, like add some shine to it. I don't know, I think once these like little tendrils dry is when I want to, I think I'm going to add some of this, this opera color that I haven't used yet. Um, this opera color or, mm, no, I think I want to add some of that once it's dry. So, but while the rest of that's drying, let's, where did you go? Oh, we can work on... Mm, we can work on most of the bubbles. So I'm going to use this little brush again. And I'm going to use my Paul Rubens. And I'm going to use this super light blue on all the bubbles. So I'm just kind of getting it wet. When I first started watercoloring, because I was so used to coloring, my patience level was just not there. I'm like, come on, hurry up and dry. And it was always bleeding into each other. And uh, it was just a mess. Like, it was always a mess. But eventually, I came around and I learned a little bit more patience. And um, I found my techniques and what worked for me. Okay. Let's go ahead and make these shiny. And this one here that I colored first, I think I'm going to come in and kind of lift, yeah. But I had a, little, had a little bit of excess water in there. And I find with these Paul Rubens, if I have a lot of that excess water, um, they don't shine as much. It wasn't even a bubble. That's okay, we can make it a bubble. And guys, I'm so excited of how many of you have uh, already got your pictures in for Mermaid Jewelry. Some of you already got a couple of them in, and I was so excited to see that. And also, what I wanted to say before is when you're coloring a picture, um, check out everybody else's hashtags, too, that, you know, that are going on. Because you can double up on a lot of them. Like, I know John, um, 
over at the Biblio Colorist, or I think that's his name, Biblio File Colorist, or something like that. Um, like his January one is like jelly rolls, uh, you know, like gel pens. And uh, so if you're using gel pens in your mermaid pictures, um, use it for his too. You know, there's a lot of different color alongs going on that you can monopolize on and um, do, you know, a few different things. So that's about all of them that I can do at the moment that I see. Okay, so her hair is still wet, so we're going to let that do its thing. And then let's grab our pasta pen. And i got to test this specific pasta pen out because this one likes to have explosion issues. Okay. I just want to do some lines on the side to make it look like it's glass-ish. I want to take where this waterline is. I try to take that out right there. And again, you guys probably can't see all of that, and that's fine. I will, I don't know if you guys can see how shiny that tail is, though. Um, I, like I said, I might turn that overhead light off uh, just so you guys can hopefully see how bright it is. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and we're going to try this color here. I'm just going to put it right on top just so I can play with it. I don't even know if you guys can see what the heck I'm doing. Oh, it's kind of red. Kind of liking that. Okay, let's do the other side. All right, so that's where I think I'm going to keep that, the hair. We're going to throw in some of the shimmery stuff, though. I'm thinking thinking this one here, because it's like a champagne color. And I'm hoping that I don't lose that, like, brightness too much. That's my hope. You know, so many people, before they make a video like they'll test it out and make sure that you know their creations are actually going to look good so they don't have like a ruined video or a waste of time uh yeah i just kind of wing it okay so please don't be, mess up the hair shine too much or the hair color oh no that's not too bad okay i can live with that and like I said, guys, this is just, oh, I hate that black. This is just a real quick, see right there, I don't know if you guys can see, but a lot of that black from that swirly kind of came out. It's okay. It's just a picture. We can't be too hard on ourselves. Okay, and I've been thinking about doing like a watercolor Wednesday. I was telling my girlfriend today about it. Um, I don't know though because if I do it, I would want to do it a little bit more. 
on the technical side or even actually doing this was really really fun i mean i'll be honest with you it, this is just like i'm having fun at home i'm not thinking about anything sorry guys i don't mean to move it out of the way i wanted to put maybe this underneath it because this kept flowing down on me but i did have a lot of fun with this picture so i shouldn't shouldn't say that okay so i gotta let that dry and i gotta um do those bubbles once it's dry but we're going to go ahead and I'm going to show you how else I'm going to finish this picture and then we'll call it, um, we'll call it done. I'll go in and do those last few bubbles um, once all that dries. So I'm going to go in, let me make sure this one's working. And we're just going to outline all these bubbles. And again, I have this glare. So yeah, so all the bubbles, I'm going to kind of go around. Okay, so I'm really not liking this gel pen at all. I want to get it off there. Let me hear this one. I'm going to use this signal. Maybe. Let's try this one down here. Sometimes I really struggle with some of these. Okay, so I guess it's going to be Pasca since nothing else wants to work. The only problem with Pasca is I always don't have a steady hand. And I think it's because the barrel's thicker. But I mean, I'm literally just outlining each bubble. Ooh, that's kind of scratchy. I'm wondering if it's not because of the paper. And then like on some of the bubbles, I'm just adding the little shine marks. Um, and then what I'm going to do, I'm not going to bore you guys with the whole process, but I am going to go ahead and do the whole outside of the bowl. Again, my hand's not that steady, so it might not be, you know, perfect bowl shape, but mm, it's okay. But yeah, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go around and do all that. Now, I'm going to go and turn off this overhead light real quick to see if I can show you guys um, the colors a little bit more. Well, it got a little brighter, huh? The colors did. But yeah, like it is um, super shiny green. And it's like it's like one of those chartreuse, like workman's shirts is what color her hair is. Uh, it's totally cool. I love it. So let me know what you guys think about this. Um, like I said, I just wanted to come have some fun today. Love playing with the shiny paints. So, all right. So I will see you guys all with a new mermaid picture too. Uh, next time I have two picked out. Uh, both of them are, are by Micah Jolina. I'm trying to decide which one to do. Um, all right, guys. Good night. And I will see you all later. Bye.